All right, Larry Kruger here from the Krug from the Pig and Pickle Krug show with a little uh, 49er talk. Uh, with free agency just a couple weeks away, the 49ers currently have eight million plus in cap space. That's the 16th most in the NFL. And I was reading our buddy Kyle Posey had a phenomenal article today on Niners Nation, talking a little bit about three free agents that Kyle believes um, would be great fits for the Niners. And you know what? I think he's absolutely spot on on all three of these picks. Let's go down and talk about who he's talking about. Now, his three players of interest, um, and these are all guys in the NFC West. He wrote an article about this today. Um, one, he says Rodney Hudson. You know, Jake Brendel's a free agent. He was a Pro Bowl alternate, and he played really well for the 49ers this year. Uh, but the Niners have gone with a different center almost every year. In fact, Jake Brendel was the fifth different week one starting center in the last six seasons under Kyle Shanahan. And he, Brendel had a really nice year. He went on to lead the Niners offense. He had 1,252 snaps played in, uh, in 20 games and he allowed just 14 pressures. Uh, he had an above average pro football focus pass blocking grade. So Brendel was a pleasant surprise. There's no question about it. But unfortunately, the quality of offensive line play in the NFL is so bad that I expect him to get paid in free agency. I think there's a very good chance that Jake Brendel goes somewhere and gets a really handsome contract. And um, I think the Niners are going to be hard-pressed to match it. So I think the Niners are very likely to have to look into the free agent market for a replacement center. And I think Rodney Hudson, who's uh, Kyle Posey's first free agent of note to check out, is a, a, an absolute perfect fit. Um, you know, he turns 34 in July, and you're, he only started the first four games of this season. He went on injured reserve. He's had some knee issues. It, you know, if you can get him on some kind of a of a you know incentive laden deal, uh, you're talking about one of the best centers in the NFL when he's on the field. So Rodney Hudson would give you a veteran, you know, and Kyle points out, Hey, you got some young quarterbacks. It might be nice to have a veteran center. You also may have, you know, Aaron Banks in his second full year in the starting lineup. Um, uh, same thing for, for uh, Spencer Burford at right guard, you know, there's a chance there could be a lot of youth with, with uh, Nick Zakel and Jason Poe playing big roles on the offensive line this year. And you may need that veteran anchor right in the middle. And I think Rodney Hudson makes a lot of sense. I don't think he's going to get a ton of money because of the injuries in free agency. And once again, if you can keep him healthy, you've got one of the best centers in football. So I love that idea of Rodney Hudson coming from Arizona. The second NFC West target that Kyle has is Ashawn Robinson. And I, you know, Ashawn Robinson and Trent Williams, I think we're almost going brawling in the in the you know on the field before the last time the Rams and Niners played. I love the fire of Ashawn Robinson. Ashawn Robinson to me is a really underrated player, and the 49ers badly need to beef up their defensive front, um, you know, next to Eric Armstead. Armstead is phenomenal. But, man, you could use a big-bodied guy or two next to him up front. And Ashawn Robinson, in a lot of ways, would be a, a phenomenal replacement, an upgrade from Hassan Ridgeway, who's also a free agent. Ridgeway's unrestricted. Kerry Hyder's unrestricted. Akeem Spence, T.Y. McGill, Michael Dwumflower, uh, and Kevin Givens are all re restricted free agents. So the Niners are kind of naked on the front line, and Ashawn Robinson – is a beast. He plays incredibly hard. He's 330 pounds. He's a phenomenal run stopper. To me, Ashawn Robinson might have been the key guy in the Rams' win over the 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Now, Aaron Donald got the key sack that, you know, that I believe ended things in the Super Bowl, but Ashawn Robinson against the Niners was just almost impossible to block. He made so many plays. And you're talking about a guy who is probably not going to cost that much in free agency. Um, you know, Kyle thinks he might require only a minimum salary, a veteran's minimum. I think he'll get more than that, to be honest. But Ashawn Robinson at 330 pounds next to Armstead, I like the combination of anchor against the run. He does not get pushed around, but he also gives you something as a pass rusher, and you'd be taking him away from the ramps. Um, and I really like the, the motor 
on a Sean Robinson. This guy plays hard. So I like guys who are all in emotionally, mentally, physically, and this guy fits that description. And to me, if you can take a key cog off the Rams defensive front and put them on your front, that's like almost a double win. So I love the idea that uh, Kyle Posey has of, of the Niners going after Ashawn Robinson. All right, let's get to the third guy because I love this one as well. I have thrown out a couple different scenarios at defensive tackle. Obviously, the A the A team is Deron Payne, right? If you can get Deron Payne, 12 and a half sacks, great pass rusher, really strong against the run. I mean, he is the guy. He and he's going to get paid a ton of money. Um then you've got to go down the list. Okay, David Onyemata, I like a lot from the Saints, but he is 30 and he's got some mileage on him. So there's concerns about durability there. Um, then I threw out Colin Saunders from the Chiefs, who's, you know, 25, 26. He's six feet, 325 pounds, really athletic, does backflips, um, very strong at the point of attack, gives you a little bit more pass rush than Kinlaw has to this point. Um, but then, you know, the one thing about, about uh, Colin Saunders is, is he's kind of a gap shooter. He's kind of a one, he's kind of a, even though he's thick, He's kind of a one gap penetrator. He doesn't necessarily anchor uh, against the run as much as you would think a guy that's six feet, 325 pounds would. So that's my only concern on Saunders, but I think he'll, you know, he's healthy, he's young, he's cheap. Um, I think he could play in a rotation for the 49ers up front. And I really like that addition. But if you're looking for that anchor piece, and let's be honest, this team lost DJ Jones to Denver. And they have not been the same without DJ Jones. Jones plugged up the A-gap. He was totally immovable. He gave you a little bit as a pass rusher, but what he was absolutely known for was just being dominant at the point of attack against the run. And to me, this third name that Kyle throws out is also that kind of player, and it's Puna Ford of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I've loved Puna Ford going back to when he was playing for the Texas Longhorns. And... He's 5'10", 5'11", but he's about 5'10", 5'11", 315 to 320 pounds. And he's an athlete, a uh, very athletic player. And I think he, as Kyle points out, he can do he can run the stunt game um, stuff inside that Chris likes to do, Chris Kucherik likes to do. He's definitely durable. He can play the run. He can anchor against the run. Um, this guy, you know, he, 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 there's, he's really a tremendous football player. He's just short. You know, he, he sniffs out screens. He's very aware. Uh, he's got great strength to hold up against combo blocks. Um, he likes to play football. I mean, the one thing about Puna, he doesn't miss a lot of games. Go check his football card. The guy plays, he just turned 27 and I love the idea of a Puna Ford, Eric Armstead, uh, defensive front for the 49ers. So he's going Rodney Hudson, Ashawn Robinson, Puna Ford. Now, to me, the 49ers have other needs, right? They gotta, they've got to find an offensive tackle. They've got to figure out the secondary. They probably need another safety. They definitely need another corner. Um, you can make an argument that they could use a second tight end of significance. But really, at the end of the day, Philly was I mean, Philly beat the Niners because they knocked out Brock Purdy. But Philly, if they had an advantage against the 49ers, they were better on the line of scrimmage than the 49ers. The Eagles O-line was better than the Niner D-line. The Eagles D-line was better than the Niners O-line. So improving on the line of scrimmage is absolutely essential to the 49ers going, going, getting to the Super Bowl and winning it. If they want that six Lombardi, they're going to have to beef up on the line of scrimmage. And I love Kyle's idea here, Kyle Posey's idea of Rodney Hudson, Ashawn Robinson, and Puna Ford. In fact, if the 49ers could go into the free agent market and come away with Rodney Hudson, Ashawn Robinson, and Puna Ford, I would feel great about their chances of building a championship caliber club the rest of the year with street free agents and draft picks. So um, I love the idea. I, you know, check out Kyle Posey. I can't give him enough love and Niners nation. They do a great job and Kyle's awesome. But I think, you know, the one thing I love about Kyle is he knows ball and 
Rodney Hudson would be a major upgrade from Jake Brendel if he could stay healthy. Uh, Ashawn Robinson would just be phenomenal to take away from the Rams, and I would love to see uh, his big frame on that 49er defensive front. I think he could even be a situational rusher and give you um, a guy who's solid against the run. But Puna Ford, in a lot of ways, is exactly the player the 49ers need because what they really needed out of Javon Kinlaw and I think what John Lynch was hoping to get out of Kinlaw this year was, okay, his pass, anything he gives you as a pass rusher is gravy. It's all about first and second down against the run. And if Kinlaw had anchored on first and second down against the run, the way DJ Jones had, I think the Niners would be satisfied to go forward with him. But the reality is his knees don't let him really play with any consistency. Uh, he got bounced around in that Eagle game terribly. And the 49ers have to find an anchor on their defensive line in this offseason next to Eric Armstead. If they can't find an anchor inside, they're, they're not going to be a really strong defense at the point of attack. And there's several teams, including the Eagles. Um, you know, you think of the best teams in football, you think of the Eagles and the Chiefs. The Eagles have have th- a three-headed monster with Miles Sanders, and the Eagles have, or the Chiefs have, Isaiah Pacheco and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. So you you better be able to stop the run up the middle. And if you could land a Puna Ford and put him opposite Eric Armstead, wow, I think you've done some great things there going into the draft. So hope you enjoyed the video. Larry Kruger once again for the Pig and a Pickle Crew Show.